I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, so I'm going to start with us. Uh, again, welcome to the first Lunch and Learn of the 24-25 school year. We do appreciate you guys taking the time to meet with us today. And um, our first Lunch and Learn is going to be about testing. We do want to give you a heads up on um, all the other ones. We try to do them almost monthly. Um, so if you would like to block your calendar, they're always at noon for a half an hour um, held via Zoom. And these are the future dates. And sorry, the bell's going off. <laughs> these are the future dates and uh, topics. All right, so um, when we're talking about college entrance exams or admissions tests, um, the main Two, the two are ACT and SAT. Um, they are part of the admissions process for students um, for colleges that require testing, and they are to assess the student's college readiness. Uh, they are slightly different tests, and we're going to share those differences um, with you in a few slides. But uh, the good thing to know is that both tests are seen as equal and valid for the colleges. So they don't care which one you submit to them. You don't have to take both, you can, um, but it's an either or not a both situation for the college admissions process. So your son or daughter um, child can choose um, which test they want to submit. They just wanna make sure that you're giving a good representation of your college readiness with the scores. Uh, starting with the SAT. The SAT is digital now, no longer paper pencil option for the SAT. It is two hours and 15 minutes in length, and it's comprised of two sections. So there's a reading math section and a math section. They are both equal in duration, um, and the digital technology um, allows it to be an adaptive type test. So it starts with a, a base level set of questions, and then um, based on your child's responses, will will adapt to the next question. Um, as they progress through the test, either harder or easier, um, and then culminates in their score ranging from um, the 200 to 800 for each section. And then the SAT is going through its own transition um, beginning this spring through next fall. The ACT currently, for now, um, is two hours and 55 minutes long, and it has both right now an option for a digital test, an online test, and the paper pencil test. It does also have an optional writing test that's 40 minutes long that students can choose to take um, if the colleges that they are applying to require it but they are going through a transition. So changes will begin this spring in April of 2025 for the digital version only. So the digital version of the ACT will begin its transition in April and the paper pencil, did, paper pencil test will change in September of 2025. What is going to change is that it's going to be a shorter format. Originally, like I said, it is um, over two hours. So it's going to shrink down to two hours in length. The number of questions will be reduced um, and the science test will become optional as well. So right now the writing is optional, science is mandatory in the digital in April of 2025 and the paper in um, September um, will have science as optional. We currently don't know the impact that this is going to have on the colleges and whether the colleges will still request the students to take the science um, or not, but we will update parents as we know, and we will try to update on our website with information as we get closer to the April and September deadlines. So how to prepare for the test? That's kind of why we're here and why we wanted you to be aware of the differences between both the ACT and SAT. So we do offer the PSAT, which is a preliminary SAT. Um, it is just for practice. The scores are not sent anywhere for our sophomores who take it. The PSAT is open to sophomores and juniors. We will be hosting that test here at Worthington Kilborn on Tuesday, October 8th. We will start testing first thing in the morning. Um, it's free, it's a free test that is um, sponsored by our district. 
please register. If you have a sophomore or junior and you would like for them to take this test, they must be registered by September 10th. Um, and this is the, the PSAT is the test that students need to take for the NMSQT, and that is, stands for National Merit Qualifying, National Merit um, Scholarship Qualifying Test. So if a student is going to get a scholarship, then they need to earn a certain score on their PSAT, their junior year. Um, there is not a, a benchmark. There's not a specific score. It's normed every year based off of how students score on it. So it'll be the top 3% or the top 5% can be National Merit Scholarship um, finalists, qualifiers, and commenders. We also offer the pre-ACT here at Worthington Kilbourne. And again, that is a practice ACT test. It will once again be open to 10th and 11th grade students. The pre-ACT will be on November 7th. Um, and the, there is a cost associated with this exam. We think it'll be approximately around $16. Um, be on the lookout for the registration that will begin the beginning of October. We will push information out in our newsletter um, and it will also be on our counselor website. There will be a two step process for getting your student um, registered for the pre ACT. You will need to fill out the Google form to register them and also get onto my payments plus account and pay for the course. So in terms of the test preparation, we always say that the best prep is a rigorous academic schedule. Um, if students are challenging themselves in their classrooms with their the classes that they are taking here at Kilbourne, that is the best way to prepare for the information presented on the test. Um, with the PSAT results, there's also an online um, resource called Khan Academy. That's K-H-A-N. And Khan Academy is a free website that has videos on topics that students might be studying in high school. And it also features standardized practice tests. So when students take the PSAT and or the pre-ACT, they will receive their test booklets back and their scores. So they can see, okay, where do I really need to um, do some test prep? Is it in the science section? Is it with reading for SAT? Is it the math? So they can use those practice tests to help prepare them. Um, there are also free online test prep options if you just simply Google pre-ACT, PSAT, um, some of those free tests will come up. And there also um, are individual and group tutoring options. On our website, we do have a page that um, where we have a printout of all of the different tutors and test prep locations around here, and that can be associated with a fee. Um, you know, if you think about, well, I don't want to spend the money to have my my child go through a tutor, you have to kind of weigh the options of, well, if they could potentially earn, you know, an $8,000, $10,000 scholarship, the $500 for the test prep might really be worth it. Um, so that's always something to think about. I think that there are two approaches to taking the test. Um, for some, you may want to have your child Take the pre-ACT, the PSAT, see how they do, then determine, okay, are we just going to have them do take the real test and see if we need to invest in some other form of um, test prep and put forth funds for getting an ACT or SAT tutor, um, or others want to do the test prep ahead. Prepare get online, do some of the practice tests, work through Khan Academy, and then take the SAT or ACT. It really is, um, you know, there, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I think the best exposure for these tests is taking advantage of the PSAT and pre-ACT that we offer here at Kilbourne. Then you can kind of make an educated decision on, okay, are we gonna go right into signing you up to take the ACT or do we want to do some test prep? 
Um, when you're deciding between which tests, like Mrs. Lord said, colleges will accept them equally. There's no right or wrong test and there's no preference. Colleges don't care which one, they just want whichever is your best test. Um, so there are some resources that you and your child can use to kind of determine, well, which test is the best test for me? The first one is the concordance tools, and we have this linked in our presentation. This is a really um, neat website that we came across that if you are looking down, there are concordance tables out there that can tell you if you've earned, you know, a 1240 on the SAT, what would that uh, be if you're looking at ACT? So if we're looking at this table, um, let's say you scored a 22 on the ACT, your SAT score would be an 1110. OK, now, if you're still trying to determine, OK, comparing these scores, which one would be a little bit better? There is a gray area with a judgment call, but this meter can either go towards you should focus and practice more with ACT or with SAT. Um, and they're kind of a scale down here as well. This has been a beneficial tool for our students to use. I know that um, in some cases, students who are really heavy in math will prefer to take the SAT because 50% of the score is math. For students who maybe math is not a strong subject, they tend to do better with the ACT because only 25% um, of their score will be the math. So you do want to weigh out the scores and which felt better to your students. Again, we can't express enough that the PSAT and the pre-ACT are two of um, the best ways to have exposure to the test, to have the timed component, um, and for the students to get a feel which one felt better. All right, everyone. So now it comes to the understanding of when should your student be taking the tests? Um, as Mrs. Mann said, it really is in your student's best interest to take the practice test that we have here at Kilbourne. So first and foremost, that PSAT that is happening for our 10th and 11th graders on October 8th, in addition, the pre-ACT, which is November 7th, and then all of our juniors are going to have the opportunity to take a free SAT in March. So those are the first and best opportunities that we want you to be aware of. And then the next slide also shows all of the upcoming dates for the ACT and the SAT. What's most important when you and your family think about testing is really what's going to suit your son or daughter best. So primarily, this is your junior class getting ready to sign up for these tests. March, certainly, like we mentioned, they're going to take that free SAT. Those preliminary tests are hopefully going to prepare them for that actual test. But then again, we have all of these other dates for you and your family to look at. When it comes to the junior class, I'd say most of them are best prepared to start the testing sometime in December. Our current seniors, class of 2025, they may want to be taking some of these September, October test dates. When we talk to our senior class, something that's really, really important is that they are going to elect to take an additional test the beginning of senior year. They want to ensure that that test um, score is going to come back prior to any admissions deadlines. Or if it comes back after they've submitted their application, will the college and university take that test later for consideration for admissions, for consideration for scholarships? So for our senior class, it's really important that they begin to research the colleges and universities, any type of rules, deadlines that they have in regards to their those submissions of test scores is very, very important. Junior class, again, though, is going to really start to take the test December, maybe spring is what we recommend um, for that. In addition, when, you're, when your students are thinking about the future, these are some of the things that we really want to point out. We think it's best for them to plan to test twice. We think that that um, 
allows them the best scenario to improve their scores, to get that initial score, use their score reports to then study, maybe get the tutoring like Mrs. Mann was saying, and then actually hope to improve their score. In addition, um, we want, like I've mentioned, for students to keep in mind those last test dates for college admissions. It's really important that they know those deadlines Something I want to point out with the ACT that can be super beneficial to our students as they're prepping is they have something called a test information release. So the ACT at three various times, three various testing times, September, April, and June, students can pay a $30 fee. And with that score report, they're going to be able to then um, get the answers from the test. That's something to really keep in mind. That additional $30 could be huge for a family and a student then as they're additionally studying and trying to improve their score. One thing also about the plan to test twice, students become familiar. They've studied. Um, maybe they've had some tutoring. Maybe they've used Khan Academy. Something that is just a good statistic to know is 57% of students that take the ACT that second time, they have an improved score. So they've gotten their feet wet, they feel more comfortable, they're maybe not as anxious or nervous going into the test. So it's really important to remember that that statistic is there and it's very beneficial for students to test twice. Next, registering for the test. How do you go about doing that? First and foremost, just to mention that March 11th date that the junior class is taking the free SAT here at school, there is nothing that the student or the family has to do. We will register them. We will make sure that they are signed up to come to school March 11th and take the SAT. However, when students are electing to take additional tests, um, and all of those dates were highlighted earlier, you are gonna use these two websites that are listed here. So actstudent.org, collegeboard.com, that is where you're going to go and register for the tests. When students are signing up for the PSAT and the pre-ACT, those registration process will be rolled out through our website. Most likely a Google form will be used that you are going to register your student on. But these two websites will become very important, especially to our junior class as they begin to prepare and sign up for the tests. Um, they will create a profile. Everything will be done in registering through those tests. However, not for the March test for the juniors at school. Another question that often comes up as it relates to testing and sending the test scores. When students are registering, creating their profiles through ACT and SAT, they are going to be asked if they want to send their scores to colleges. It's really a personal choice if they want that score to be sent. I think it's best to go ahead and put those free, four free test scores when you sign up, because if you don't, you're going to have to pay for them on the back end. So if your son or daughter is very much in the know of, I know I'm definitely applying to these four schools. Maybe they just have their top two schools and two that they're thinking about. I would go ahead and enter those so that those scores get reported for free. Something that we haven't talked about yet, but it's important to note is that some colleges will super score. And that's another benefit of sending all of your test scores each time you take it. So a super score is when a college or university elects to take various scores from different test administrations to come up with the best score for the student. So some will super score, some will not. And that's an important part of your guys' research as you're um, thinking about different colleges and universities. Okay, so for um, some students, they qualify for testing with accommodations. So we just wanted to note for um, the parents that there are additional steps to apply for accommodations through ACT and SAT. The ACT organization and College Board for SAT make those determinations, not us as 
the school. So um, you'll want to plan to register early for the, the testing dates for your um, child if they qualify for testing with accommodations and follow the, the steps in the process for ACT and SAT um, in order for um, the accommodations to be reviewed and considered for testing. There will be um, testing accommodations for the PSAT here for students qualified, but for the pre-ACT, we will not be able to accommodate um, accommodations for the pre-ACT here as the practice test. And fee waivers, we do want to mention that for um, both the ACT and the SAT, they both have fee waivers, which means you do not need to pay to take the test. Um, and those can be available for students who do qualify for free and reduced lunch. Um, if that, <coughs> excuse me, if that is um, something that your family qualifies for, please have your child see the counselor. Um, their school counselor to receive one of the fee waivers. There are two fee waivers available for students um, for the SAT and four fee waivers, meaning that students can take the ACT up to four times with the fee waivers. Fee waivers will also enable students to apply for college for free. So again, if this is something that your family qualifies for um, and, and needing the free and reduced lunch, then the fee waivers can be available for you. So another important topic when we're thinking about testing is colleges and universities now have a policy where it could be a test optional school. So that is empowering students and giving them the choice of if they want to submit their test score or not. This is very much a personal decision, but you really want to ensure that you're doing your research with this decision. So you really need to look at each college and university. If they are test optional, what exactly does that mean? Um, they could be test optional, but then there is more rigorous GPA requirements as it relates to admission. Some examples of some test optional things just to be aware of, Cornell, for example, is test optional, but they state in their policy, they want to see scores from students who otherwise haven't faced any hardships in regards to testing access. So to me, they're test optional, but if a student has the option to test, like all of our students do here at Kilbourne for that free SAT, they should be sharing the score. South Carolina, they say that they're test optional, but ACT, SAT, or three AP IB exam scores could be shared or a graded essay. So they're giving students options to share, but there could be something in replacement of that. Something else that's very important to keep in mind when it comes to being a test optional school, they might be test optional if you're doing um, just general admission, but maybe you want a specific nursing program, an engineering program, and you actually must share your test score if you're looking for those programs specifically. The website you see listed here, fairtest.org, that gives you a lot more information about specific schools that are test optional. Um, but just please understand, it's not a blanket policy and some are going to require a score for additional items. Something else um, when it comes to test optional is a test is just one component of a student's application. Common App, if they're using the Common App, is going to have some students do some self-reporting. So you want to make sure, again, with your research, if you're sending your score from AC to your SAT when you're signing up, is that college going to absolutely look at it and then you declare test optional and they throw that out? There's just a process that you want to be familiar with when your seniors specifically are applying. So Keep that in mind, know that there's no right or wrong, but you want to be well informed about the colleges you're applying to as you make that decision. All right, that was the presentation on testing, but we do wanna open up the last few minutes we have with you to any questions that you have. We do ask that you type them in the chat and we do have several there, um, so we'll, read the question from the chat and then answer them. And if you have a question, feel free to add it to the chat now. 
And um, again, the, before we wrap up that there is the next uh, Lunch and Learn on October 4th, and it'll be on cell phones and teens. So with that, we're gonna start reading the questions and um, answering them. The first question is, what is the earliest that juniors can test and have their scores count? So students can test at any point. Um, if they sign up, register, and take the standardized test, it is a standardized score that the colleges um, will use and accept. Um, I can say that the tests are normed with content um, in math with some Algebra 2 content in it and uh, in the science and in the reading comprehension, some higher level sciences like chemistry. Um, so that's why we typically say that junior year is when students um, should test because they've been exposed to that content. Um, but also we don't want them to get test fatigue in in education. Sometimes we, I mean, we test them every year. And so we don't want them to get burnout on the test that they're get, submitting to the college for admissions. Um, so sometimes too much, too early is too much testing. Um, so that's the piece to the puzzle you have to decide with your son and daughter. Is the free test at Kilbourne ACT or SAT? Um, we, it, it's the SAT that will be in March that is new for the district this year. In years past, we have always given the ACT, but for this year, it will be the SAT. And that's for juniors in March. The next Question is, if the PSAT was taken as a sophomore, can they take it again as a junior? So yes, so the sophomore PSAT is pretty much the practice. The junior class, when they take the PSAT, that is what is going to enter them in for national merit qualification, but it can be taken twice. And we think it's, it's a great idea for students to do so, get their feet wet and um, have them do that practice. Okay, the next question is, what if you want to see how you do on the test before deciding if you want to report them? Um, great question. So you do not need to take advantage of the four free colleges to send your test scores. Um, if you want to see what the score is first, you can always go in and decide to send the test score after. It'll just be associated with a fee. Another thing to remember is if you, you do you know, have the free scores sent, but you end up applying to the college as test optional, that college will not pull the report. They will not see the test scores. So if you really are hesitant, let's see what your score is before we want to send them, then I would recommend not sending your test scores for free. When we say a fee associated with it, I think, guys, don't quote me on this, but I think it's $14 per per college. So then it would be a $14 fee and you could have your score set. Yeah, we've been told by the colleges that for those that um, remain test optional, um, that if a student, if they have scores on the student, they're sitting there, but the reviewers of the college application do not see it if you select test optional. Um, so there's a there are people who process the paperwork and there are the reviewers who read the applications. So um, we have been told that 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 is the the process if you decide test optional and you've sent the score reports and applying to college is relatively pricey like you're going to be budgeting <laughs> um, to to do that because there's an application fee and then the test scores they want the test scores if you're submitting test scores or they require test scores they want the test scores from ACT and SAT they don't accept them from us. Um, so it can be pricey. So for free in, in the budgeting, we would take advantage of it um, when the reviewers don't see it if you choose test optional. Right. That cost when you add it at the end, just so you guys are aware, it's $12, I believe, for the ACT or the SAT and 13 for the other or vice versa. Thank you. So anytime you add it additionally, that's how much you're paying per score, per school. So using those for free could really be to your benefit. Next question, is there an average increase in either tests that can be anticipated between the practice and actual tests? So if I'm understanding the question right, um, the practice, so the practice tests when they give you your results, give you a, a, an anticipated, like if I take the pre-ACT and my score report comes back, it tells me that if I get the 24 on the pre-ACT, 
that my estimated ACT score will be in this range um, if I do nothing else, if I just repeat the test. So if I take the pre-ACT, here's my score, my anticipated ACT. If I do no test prep, then I'm anticipated to get a score in that window by taking the full-blown ACT. Now that would change if I do test prep, um, hopefully, um, but it gives you that range. So you sort of know where you are in the testing and whether you feel like you need to do some more test prep um, before taking the real one. If I if that's not the answer to the question, if you could type and let me know that I would. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? That's the end of our list right now. How can we access past scores or no, sorry. How can we access PSAT scores from last year? Um, well, they should be in your My College Board account. Um, are PSAT scores in there, Molly? Yeah, so okay, that's um, what I thought. The, during the pre-registration, students submitted their identifying information and then um, they had to follow some steps um, in order to create a College Board account and have mm -hmm. their scores there. Um, if you don't, or your son or daughter does not remember their login for College Board in order to do that. Um, I believe there's customer service um, chats and things like that on College Board. Um, we do have the scores that we could give you, but we don't have access to the official score report where it breaks it down, where it tells you the wrong answers. So the benefit of the PSAT and the pre-ACT is um, they will send back to you your answers and whether they were right or wrong to every question so that you then can review the questions you got wrong before taking the real test. We just have the raw score that got sent to us in a database. So we could certainly tell you what your um, child got, but the details are in that score report that is really helpful to you in the test prep. So um, you'd either have to have your child log in to their account. And if they do not remember their login, follow the the steps on College Board for PSAT on how to recover it and ACT for the pre-ACT, same process. The next question I see, is there a compelling reason for sophomores to take the test and what percentage of students typically participate? I guess the practice, the PSAT and the pre-ACT, the reason is just to best prepare for the actual tests that I think are best taken as a junior. Um, I feel as though the compelling reason is really just to get those score reports, dive into those score reports, focus on areas of weakness to then best prepare for the real ACT or the real SAT. As far as a percentage of students, particularly sophomores, um, taking, I, I don't know, do you mean the PSAT or the pre-ACT or the actual ACT and SAT? I'm not sure. I don't know of a specific percentage. Um, the practice is what was just typed in. So do you, Molly or Erica, do you guys know a percentage? We would have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, I got to look up the spreadsheet. Hold, yeah, hold but I do feel at Kilborn, um, we have a good number of students that are taking advantage of that. And the fact that you're here, a part of this webinar, we really encourage it. We think it's best for students. But Eric is looking. Okay, I'm just doing a quick search. Um, as of now, we have 259 students registered for the PSAT in October. That is a mix between sophomores and juniors. And I would say that, I mean, that could probably be split down the, the middle. Yeah. So, so that could be about a third of our sophomore yeah, class. A students, third, I would say, of our yeah. sophomores. Yeah. Right. But if a student would come to us and say, should I take it? I'm anticipating applying to college. These are my, you know, schools or yes, take it. Pre-ACT, it was about, I'm looking at, I, I don't think last I'm looking years. at last year's data. Yeah. It's a couple years data, but it was 77 <laughs> juniors and 50 sophomores. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that answers that question. I think part of it is probably 
to your, your child. So um, if your child was accelerated in math and they're already in pre-calc versus if they're in math three um, or math two as a sophomore, um, whether the testing is going to be helpful for them to know or whether they need to be exposed to that content before they take the test. And um, the tests are meant to be helpful for them to to sit in a room for two hours and be directed on testing and to try to answer 50 questions in not very much time. So like the pacing, um, it, it's meant to expose them to that and to be helpful to them. So um, if they need more of that, then taking it sophomore year and junior year is very helpful. If, um, if not, and too many tests does the opposite effect, like talking with your, with your child. Um, but again, offering it to sophomore year so that then um, taking the real test, at, at least by winter, definitely by spring of junior year, um, maybe even fall of junior year, um, maximizes their opportunities to um, do interventions if need be and, and try to best be regulated for that testing day um, to perform their best. So, mm -hmm. for the super scores, do you know the threshold they need to hit to be super scored? Uh, no, it just is, depends on if the colleges allow for super scores um, to be accepted. Not all schools do. In fact, there's only a couple in Ohio um, that allow for scores to be super scored. And you would find that from if you're looking at like I know Ohio State does not allow for um, ACT or um, SAT to be super scored, but I believe Miami does. You would just look on their admissions page. They would be able to tell you. I don't know if I'm understanding that question. Did I answer that question, Alicia? OK. These are all great questions. I know we've gone over the time. We want to be respectful of your time. So if you need to hop off, no, no hard feelings. We're just happy you're here. We'll hang out here if you guys think of any more questions or. Remember September 10th? Next week is the last day to register sophomores and juniors for the PSAT. Um, is it worth early application? Debbie, are you talking about applying to schools, early action or early decision? Both of those. What what the difference is with those and, yep. and what we'll, is it the benefit or not? Yes. So these are great questions. So when you apply to a college early action, that just simply means that you're applying earlier, you're going to hear back from them with a decision earlier. Early decision can be a binding, um, a monetary binding thing. So if you decide this is the school I'm going to, that you, if you get accepted, you are committed to attending that college regardless of the financial aid package they give you. A lot of our students tend to take advantage of the early action because they, and that's typically a November 1st, October 15th deadline. Um, they, they want to hear back from the colleges sooner. They want to know typically December, January, I've been accepted and start to make their, their decision and look at the financial aid pieces. Um, th there's no right or wrong, but if you are planning on applying, early action or even early decision, that's when you really have to be mindful of when you're registering for the SAT and the um, ACT. Because if you take it at the beginning of your senior year, chances are you may not have that score back because I know there's an October date and you will not have that test score back for the November 1st, which typically is deadline um, like Ohio State. Although, did Ohio State change their deadline this year? I need to look at that. Yeah. And November 1st. What is it November now? November 1st. It's it November 1st. Okay. The other thing, yeah, the other thing um, just to think about and know, 
oftentimes with an early action deadline, sometimes, and this is where the research component really comes in, it could also be their scholarship deadline. Mm -hmm. So if a student wants to be considered OSU, for example, their scholarship deadline is also November 1st. So applying early action is very much in a student benefit just as long as they know, especially if it's a scholarship deadline. Early decision, that binding agreement, you're going to go there no matter what if they accept you. Um, that That's a hard decision for a student to make or a family to make not knowing the financials ahead of time. Should uh, Next question was, should we receive confirmation of registration of the PSAT? I'm not sure the answer of that because we're not in charge of the registration, but um, you could email the counselor if you're in doubt. Um, the person who asked it, I can confirm that I see your name and your child's name on the spreadsheet. So, Perfect. Um, I just put the counselor's website on the chat. You can register your child. I think that's what you mean by where can I find the link to the application form? I think that's what you mean um, for the PSAT, and it's right on our homepage. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see um, PSAT, and then under there, it says students can register for the PSAT by using this link, and just click on that. And we'll have a link in a Google form in October for the pre-ACT. Yes. All right. Well, we any other questions out there? Yes, these slides will be available along with the um, recording of this Lunch and Learn. They will be on our website, I would say, mid-next week. Just check back. But yes, we, we can absolutely post this presentation as well. And if you scroll to the top of the chat before we sign off, I did put the link to the concordance table in there when Mrs. Mann was talking about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Molly. Yep. Okay, we um we're glad you guys are here. Truly, these would <laughs> not be beneficial if nobody came. So this is yeah. great. Hopefully you ate your lunch and had fun with us. Um, next one is October 4th, and we'll talk about cell phones and our teenagers and hopefully give you some little nuggets of information with that. Enjoy your Friday. Everybody have a safe weekend. Thank you.